Good morning again, everybody. Morning. morning. <laughs> Shall we were wearing the same color? Uh, same color on a Friday. Okay, today's Friday. What date is it today? It is October 11. October 11, Friday morning. Okay, so what is the mystery that we will talk about today? Sorrowful. What mystery of the rosary? Sorrowful. And we already commented on the first sorrowful mystery, right? Last Tuesday. So, today is the second sorrowful mystery. So what is the second sorrowful mystery? Let's see. Scourging. Chevelle, scourging at the pillar. Okay. So what can we contemplate about? What can we think about? When, when we are doing uh, the second sorrowful mystery of the rosary. Yeah. Hi, Eva. You better feed that girl so she uh, doesn't make that much noise. So what can we think about as we pray that decade of the rosary? The sorrowful mysteries, the second sorrowful mystery, the scourging at the pillar. So we can imagine our Lord there before Pontius Pilate, right? When Pontius Pilate was having trouble trying to make a decision what to do with Jesus because he himself was not convinced that Jesus was guilty of any crime that merited death. Okay? So you can imagine the agony also of Pontius Pilate at that point. That he, being the uh, Roman... Um, um, uh, that he was. Uh, you see, the Romans were very particular about the uh, the application of law. Okay? Romans are are um, very conscious about justice, and so he was very careful about uh, being just to to Jesus to a certain extent. Right? He didn't want to be perceived as being unjust, and so. While he was troubled, his conscience troubled him because uh, he had to uh, resolve a situation that, um, you know, was was getting out of hand. And uh, the Jewish people were already uh, rising up against the, the, Roman, uh, the Roman soldiers and everybody else. And uh, they were trying to quell the uh, uprising and make sure it doesn't get any worse. But at the same time, Deep inside him, Pontius Pilate was thinking, well, I can't just commit this guy uh, and, and send him to be killed. And, uh, you know, it's against Roman law. And, but we're reckoning here with Jewish law. So how do you reconcile these things? At the same time, his wife told him, well, you better not have anything to do with this Jesus of Nazareth. Right? And, uh, and that gave Pontius Pilate... Uh, uh, a very difficult situation and then he it led him to question truth right what is truth he wanted to understand uh, the truth behind Jesus but anyway in all of this difficulty Pontius Pilate just does the unconscionable outrageous thing which is well you know uh, let's just punish him one way or the other and maybe that might satisfy these Jewish people. So let's have him scourged. Scourging. Well, is, is one very heavy and difficult punishment in itself. But the thing was, when he came to Jesus, the Roman soldiers went overboard. They just didn't uh, whip him with the normal uh, instruments of punishment that they would use with normal criminals. They dealt with him in a harsher way. In fact, uh, legally, legally, you could not go beyond 40 lashes as far as Roman law is concerned. But with our Lord, they went overboard. They did more than 40 lashes. So there was plenty of injustice happening here 
with our Lord Himself, right? And I think there's no better depiction of that scene of the uh, scourging at the pillar than what was cleverly and masterfully depicted in that movie, The Passion of the Christ, right? That's why that's a very nice movie to watch if only to really understand and picture in our minds what might be happening during uh, these particular scenes in the uh, Passion and Death of our Lord. The, uh, the scourging of the pillar was, was a very, very powerful um, uh, part of that movie. And really, if it doesn't make you cringe in, uh, in imagining the pain that our Lord went through, then I don't know where your sensitivities lie. Our Lord's body, the most pure body of our Lord, the handsome, most possibly, the, not only possibly, I'd like to think it's the most perfect body that ever was, crea was created for any human being, had to suffer the grievous and very painful wounds inflicted by the most inhuman form of punishment you can imagine. The most perfect flesh, the most pure flesh, the most beautiful, the most handsome flesh of our Lord was subjected to such tormenting pain that <clears throat> left him bruised, wounded, broken to the point where he almost died just because of the scourging. This second mystery of the, of the rosary always gets me to think about how I treat my own body. About how Many times we, we commit sin, we commit sin by the way we treat our human bodies. Think for example about the excessiveness with which, with which we vainly think about how pretty, handsome, beautiful we are. Think of the many times when we are so conscious about our appearance that we, we go to great lengths to try to preserve our outward uh, 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 physical beauty. Think of the many times that we might have abused our, ourselves by committing sins of impurity, sins of the flesh. Think of the many times when we engaged in... <laughs> hey, you better feed Ava. Think of the... Oh, she's looking at her milk. Think of the many times, speaking of milk, when we overfed our bodies out of gluttony. Right? Or because we just like food. And we like the taste of food. And we want to satisfy our palate with how nice the food tastes. Think of the many times when we excessively adorn our bodies with the most expensive jewelry or clothing or shoes or what have you that we can use to just make ourselves appear a little bit more presentable. I think we treat ourselves in excess many times when it comes to our bodies and what we don't realize is that while while we need to preserve some form of dignity and some form of decorum and some form of presentability towards other people so that we don't appear shabby and and we you know out of respect for other people we dress up and we groom ourselves and we we uh 
you know, uh, do our own upkeep. But many times, we really do it in excess of what might be necessary. And anything in excess of what's not necessary is a vice. There's some more virtue in that. Just think of the many hours you might have wasted in front of the mirror just making sure everything is properly, uh, you know, <laughs> in place there. Okay, or even the uh, eyebrow or I don't know what. You know? <laughs> Some people are just so vain. They're so vain. And I'm talking not only of women but also of men. Some men can be very vain and they don't even realize it. They don't realize it. And in today's culture, vanity is virtue. Well, not. No, it's not. Vanity is not virtue. So I think about all of those sins when I pray the second mystery of the sorrowful mystery of the rosary. I think of how many times I might have offended our Lord in those sins of vanity sins of the flesh particularly the sins of the flesh particularly the sins of uh, impurity immodesty right things that would satisfy the flesh things that would give pleasure to our flesh to our bodies and every time you get tempted in purity think of the scourging at the pillar think of how our lord our Lord's most pure body was beaten almost to death. And here you are giving in to the pleasures of the flesh. How can we, how can we do that? See? So the second sorrowful mystery is a very good way for us to think about purity, vanity, modesty okay? all of these virtues and their vices and it should help us to control ourselves it should help us to to measure the extent at which we we take care of ourselves but to not to the extent where we fall into vanity gluttony um you know, and 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 uh, and comfort seeking, right? Maybe it can help us to be more mortified every time we think about the scourging of the pillar. Let's think about the mortifications that we can offer to our Lord. See, so the second sorrowful mystery helps us think about those things, and it will be a great thought to keep in mind every time we pray the second mystery second sorrowful mystery of the Holy Rosary. Okay, that's it for us, folks. Good morning to everybody on this call. Hi, Deb. Hey, I hope you're Debbie. enjoying your uh, new place and you're settled in. Say hi to everybody for us. Okay, that's it for us, folks. Bye-bye, everybody. Have a good day and have a good weekend ahead of you. Bye.